Okay, here we go. I still have to get used to YouTube stuff, apparently. I still have to, like, punch some things before they go live, unfortunately. All right, so we should be good to go now. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Let me, uh, all right, fixing a couple things. So yeah, it's different streaming to YouTube than some of the other services. So sometimes I gotta remember to click the right button so I can get y'all going. So first off, welcome to everybody. Super excited to share some stuff with y'all today. We're gonna do some deck doctoring because I have a lot of people on YouTube who wanna send me deck lists in the chats and whatever. There's just not a good way to deal with that. Though you can always join my Discord if you like. That is a thing that's always available if you want to get deck help or come chat about things. Matter of fact, I will get you that link here and I'll put that in the chat. Uh, here you go. If you're ever curious, there you go. I see some of my regulars from the Twitch chat hanging out in here. Enigma and Buggy Man, welcome. So that's a thing too. If y'all just want to come hang out, hit me up in the Discord. Uh, the other thing that's a little strange that I want to point out to people if you follow me on Twitch and I stream over there, the delay to YouTube's a bit different. Normally we have like a five or six second delay. There's about a 20 second delay whenever I'm streaming to YouTube. So that is a thing we're going to have to pay attention to. It's going to be a little bit weird. So if I'm responding a little bit slower than you're used to, just know that that's why. Now, here in about, mm, let's say about an hour, hour and a half, I have a really cool giveaway we're going to do. Not going to tell you what it is yet. Just going to tell you you have to be present in order to win. That's all, that's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Feral Acorn, hey, thanks for subbing to the channel. Much appreciated. I've been putting in a lot of time, so it's cool to see that y'all are really appreciating the work, by the way. Like, this is super fantastic. Uh, it's just totally different being involved in the different platforms you know because there's stuff i think that works well on twitch that doesn't necessarily work well on youtube and vice versa and i'm trying to offer something a little bit different to both groups so first question it is the music overpowering too loud or coming through okay here in the background because i don't want to like make it too weird for everybody or make it hard to hear me especially if i'm going to be taking the time to help you with your deck list that's going to be the biggest thing and why we're letting people kind of get in here and kind of pop up because that happens a little bit people kind of got to get used to uh getting the notifications that we're live streaming anyone have any questions before we get started that you want to know whether that's about magic about me about whatever We'll knock that out for about uh, three to five minutes here, and then we'll start letting people... Okay, cool, so the music works. All right, so also while y'all are doing that, I wanna have a fair way to give everyone a chance to have their deck list looked at. So in theory, I'm hoping this works by the way, this link should be to a Google Docs form. You should be able to put your name. You should be able to put the link to your deck list. So if you want help, hit me up on those. Preferably something that's either historic or standard. So that way I can use Arena and it's an easier platform so we can show that stuff off when we're talking about deck lists. So check that out. Fill that out for me. And then I'll be able to randomize among the people who respond to be able to pick out uh, who to include. So I think that'd be a good help there. So that way I figure that's fair. That way I can just pick a number and then I can just go in and look at like the number five response or whatever. And then we'll just go with that person's choice. And that way I don't have to like play favorites or anything crazy or nobody has to feel bad. You know, I can feel good about that. Uh, mostly standard, but if you want help with historic, I can help you out with it. I just don't play a lot of historic just because I don't enjoy historic as much, but I know that's some people's jam. It's not mine, but nothing wrong with that. It's still in arena. We can still talk about it. Totally fine. 
Uh, but yeah, anyway, it looks like the doc is working. Looks like some people have already submitted. So perfect. Everything's working as expected. And people who show up late, they can do the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're here early, here late. One response holds tight. The only thing I would say is if you're not present, we won't be able to follow up. So that's going to be kind of the hard part there. Also, you're going to want to chat if you want to be available for the drawing later. So because I'm going to use a program that pulls from a random chat comment. So it doesn't it doesn't count duplicates. So, I mean, if you just chat a lot, you don't have a better chance than anybody else. But you got to get at least one in there so it can at least uh, check that. Otherwise, won't be any good. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me come back here. Uh, is Adventures good and historic? Not terribly. It's a bit slower than a lot of historic, so it's probably not what you want to be playing, I don't think. Uh, you don't play either, honestly. You don't like standard, but I love your content anyway. Hey, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Not everything's for everybody. Uh, let's see. Other questions. As far as archetypes goes, what's your favorite, most preferred? I don't really have one, honestly. I just like playing magic. Uh, Brawl is fine. I mean, we could talk about Brawl list, I guess. You're officially available for the drawing. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. The only problem we're going to have is if you're not present for the drawing, it's going to be really hard for me to contact you. So I'm probably going to go with whoever is present. So this, this is going to be a fun day, though. I'm trying to make this part of my regular rotation is throwing in some of these YouTube videos, uh, live streams. People seem to enjoy them. They got a moderate amount of views, not a lot. But one of those things, if people enjoy it, then let's just keep doing it. You know, I've got no problem with this. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Hey, I understand you got to work and pay the bills. You're new to MTG, only two months, but loving it so far. That's good. That's good. I mean, Magic's kind of in one of those weird places, right? Where there's so many awesome people, so much good content, so much to learn from the game. But, you know, I think like a lot of game, well, most game communities, it's got its problems. You know, we've got our knuckleheads and we're still working through that, but... Yeah, there's a lot of good time, especially right now, while a lot of the content creators have kind of revamped their stuff and really approaching it differently because of the pandemic, there's even more content than before. So I would definitely give that a look. Lots of good stuff out there. Said that Momir broke on Arena. I heard there were some problems last night. I didn't try it. It's not really my thing, but hey, hopefully it works for people. Orzov of Humans is looking interesting. Yeah, I, I figure some people will enjoy that list. I'm more of a clerics type person or even mono white if I'm going to go that route. But the deck does have some benefits, especially being able to remove stuff from the graveyard. That's a really big point for the deck uh, when you're worried about, say, like the Croxa decks or something like that. Uh, MTG needs a historic brawl as a game type that is always available it probably will be in the future the thing here's the thing i want to say about that like people want every format to be available all the time the problem is until the user base reaches certain numbers you would just be thinning out the player pool for everything right because people would only build one or two decks for their absolute favorite thing or whatever instead of like their second or third thing that they're willing to play but it's not their favorite so some of that is like numbers management to make sure there's always a variety of people to play against in all the different formats eventually as arena gets more and more and more people more of those formats i would like to think can become permanent and it becomes less of an issue uh let's see fun to watch your scoot mutate gruel video last night yeah that was a pretty wild one i did enjoy that are you planning on playing some historic on the channel? Not likely. I don't play hardly any historic right now. I think there's other good content creators doing a lot of historic. Uh, if people really just wanted to see me play historic, I would do it. But my historic videos don't get as many views as my other standard content. And I just am not playing a lot of it right now. Not opposed to it, but it's just not a thing. Anyone else not encounter the bugs people are posting on Twitter? I haven't seen any either, Fabled Hero. Uh, I know a lot of people are getting them. It just hasn't been a thing for me. Uh, why is the stream so short? 
I'm not sure what you're talking about, Isabel. We just started. <laughs> we literally started like 10 minutes ago. Uh, thanks, Gareth. I, I think it looks cool, too. I uh, love watching the content from different creators still struggling to get enough wild cards to build on. Yeah, that's going to come with time. Uh, I have some if you go to my playlist on my channel, I have a section for just like arena tips and tricks or whatever. And I talk about some ways you can kind of maximize your gold regularly. And you should be able to do a thousand to twelve hundred gold a day without a lot of effort. And that'll get you there real fast. Within a month, you should be able to build at least one of the biggest decks if you want to. Or, and then after that, it gets easier and easier with each deck. Uh, it's already over, or do you load another video with stream? I'm, I don't I don't understand. It's not over. We're doing this live right now. I don't, <laughs> I'm so confused. Like, we put videos up. Like, my video for the day is already up. We're just doing this as bonus content. So I'm not sure what you're asking. I'm so confused. Uh, they can always allow people to look for games in multiple formats at the same time, like Dota 2. Uh, Anthony, that is a possibility, but I don't know if that's a thing they really want to do. A lot of games don't do it, and I personally think it's better they just stay away from it, honestly. Oh, well, it's frozen on your YouTube, Isabel. Refresh or something, because we're still definitely live. All my stuff says we are still running. Oh, nope. There it goes. Now I'm having a problem. Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. I do have a few dropped frames. Not many, just a couple. But otherwise, it seems like we're running fine, so... I'm not going to sweat it too much at the moment. Uh, just coming back after a long hiatus, your content is extremely helpful. Hey, that's so nice to know, David. Uh, one of the things I have been focusing on is trying to do the content in a way that is informative, as well as just being kind of fun and easy to listen to, regardless of what your main uh, native language is or your skill level or anything else. So I'm trying to make it as reasonably accessible to as many people as possible being a you know dumb american english speaker uh let's see all you play a standard but stop playing with the bands didn't come in soon enough so i didn't purchase anything after august well welcome back because now's a great time to be able to play standard uh get a thousand or so gold a day but the problem is i'm trying to build three decks and can't decide well that's a personal decision you got to work on ellie i can't solve that one for you I wish there was more cards available online. I want to make a, my arena mono blue decks as strong as real life decks. But as a way to get my magic fix, can't really complain. Well, yeah, and, and I don't think arenas meant to be the same as paper magic, right? They offer different things. You can have more flexibility. You can make up more formats in paper. There's just more history, more stuff, more socializing that goes with that. Uh, unfortunately, with the pandemic, though, Arena is kind of like our best option right now, you know, so we're just gonna have to go with that. No particular question, just a thank you for the content. Thank you so much, Johnny Reed. Uh, not the best way to do this, but it's just mentioning this. I feel you. Also new random person. Well, welcome, random person. Thank you, Luis. Uh, there are between six and eight billion unique users in Magic and Arena. Okay. <laughs> like it's just, yeah, sure, it's a number. Uh, you've accomplished your goal. The content is very accessible, informative, entertaining. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so again, just so everybody knows, get the latecomers here up to speed. If you would like help with your deck, what we're going to do is I have a link. You have to go to this link. That I'm going to post it again in the chat. Go there. It's a Google Doc. You need to put in your username. need to put in your link to your deck and then that way i will choose at random we will work on the deck that we come up with and then i'll choose the next one and then i'll choose the next one and people can keep joining throughout the day but joining more than once doesn't do anything for you matter of fact if i see you've joined more than once i'll probably just not pick you on principle because that's how i roll so just one time one entry one deck list that's it then here in about an hour we're gonna do a giveaway you do have to be present to win. Not going to tell anybody what it is. 
So you ask all you want. It's a surprise. Pretty sweet, though. It's pretty sweet. But it's going to be a fun giveaway. And we're going to randomize. We're going to use a program that just picks a random comment. It doesn't matter how long you comment or how many times you comment or whatever. If you just have one comment in there, it will pick one comment. That's just the way it goes. It actually deletes any multiples. So you're not giving yourself an edge. <laughs> Are you planning to have this stream be two or three hours? Not sure, Nick. We're just going to play it by ear and see how it goes. Read somewhere that Mitgo made more money last year than Magic Online. Is that even remotely possible? Uh, it is possible. I would question its truthfulness. But yes, I could see a world where it would be possible. But even if it did, I wouldn't think it would be by more than a couple percentage points. So I'd still put my money on Arena. Thank y'all. Y'all are so positive. These, these are the people I want. Y'all are going to inflate my ego. How do you link decklist somewhere in chat? Uh, you don't link it in chat. You go to the link I just gave you, which is the Google Doc. And then wherever you post your decklist, whether that's... I, I use Aetherhub. Some people use Goldfish. Some people use untap.gg. There's like 10 different sites you can use. Wherever you post your decklist, give me a link to that deck. That's that's the trick. Doesn't matter what you use, you just gotta put that link in that Google Doc so I can get to it. That that's all that matters. <laughs> so yeah, all right. Looks like we're starting to get a good crowd here. I'm gonna wait about three or four more minutes and then we'll get started on the deck doctoring. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh I have some new so also, while I've got everybody's attention. I'm also going to do this same giveaway when you find out what it is here in about an hour. I'm going to do this again on Sunday on Twitch. I'm going to do it about this time. I'm going to start the stream probably around one o'clock and it'll go about probably three hours on Sunday. So if you don't win anything in this one, you'll have a chance to do it again on Sunday on Twitch. So you can come and join my Twitch channel. By the way, while we have some time, I can give you all my Twitch link and people can just go over and follow me over on Twitch right now. And then you'll get notifications whenever I'm live. So that's a thing you can do. So that'll make it easy going forward. And then on Monday night, I'm on Monday nights on Twitch, 9 p.m. to midnight, Pacific time. I will be doing another giveaway. Because one of the things I do is on Twitch, if we meet our sub goal and our follower goal for the week, I do a giveaway the following Monday. So we met our goal last night. So that means I get to go into my Dragon Vault and pull out something fun, interesting, rare, expensive, whatever, and give it away to somebody in the stream on Monday night. So that's just another thing just from coming and hanging out with us. I saw you commentated the championships. You did a really great job. Were you nervous? Uh, I wasn't nervous. I think during that particular event, though, I was a little more distracted. I think the way that Wizards likes to do stuff, particularly with that group we were I was working with and some of the other circumstances around it, I wasn't 100% mentally in the ball game. But I don't think I was nervous at all. Uh, I do a lot of other commentary for Channel Fireball. Lately, I've been doing stuff for their uh, CFB Pro Showdowns that they do every month. I did their Clash event like three weeks ago. I, a few other things. You know, I've done some stuff for Mythic Society as well. And it's not really nervous. I enjoy talking to people. I mean, I talk about magic. I record videos every week. I have a podcast. So I have no discomfort being in front of people. It's actually pretty easy. I actually enjoy doing it. I... And more importantly, I like doing some of the ones with Channel Fireball just because I get to work with different people. Like, uh, it turns out the last two times I worked with Reed Duke and we got, got along great. Chemistry was great. The commentary was awesome. So I hope I get to work with him again. Uh, agree with Zara. Good commentary skills, in my opinion. Hope so. uh, my biggest thing is, I think, just figuring out the line for each audience and figuring out, like, what level of humor and what level of, uh, like, play-by-play -play expertise or punctuality does the audience want or need for a particular format and whatnot. And that changes, you know, depending on what the format looks like or whatever. 
Uh, like, do we want to talk about more about the actions going on or maybe the decision making? Or does everybody know the cards enough that we can joke around a little bit? You know, all of that's something you kind of have to pick up and learn as you do it. And it all has a unique feel depending on the event, the format, the audience, you know, and you'll figure it out usually within the first hour, hour and a half. Channel Fireball, is that on YouTube or can you look me uh, They are just channelfireball.com, but they do all their stuff over on Twitch. So twitch.tv slash channel fireball, just one word. And then uh, they do also have a YouTube channel that they post videos on weekly with their sponsored players. So you can check them out as well. Like you remember, most of the time it's just be yourself. Yeah, that's true. I like both pairings. Read. Yeah, me and Corey get along great. Uh, we actually refer to ourselves as Da Bomb because that's what all the famous couples do. They put their names together. But yeah, Corey was a good one. Uh, I enjoyed working with Huey Jensen. That was a good one. Uh, I've just, I just enjoy doing it. I, I think it's a fun thing. I, I'm glad I get get to do it, honestly, because it's one of those weird things that I think without situations in the world being what they were and without like COVID happening, I don't know if I would have got the opportunity, but things kind of played out in a way that I do get to do it now, right? So it's, so it's kind of cool, weird, but cool, you know, being in a situation that I would have never considered I would get to do in the past, but here we are. <laughs> 2020 is something else. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I need to refresh a quick thing on my end. And then I'm going to hop over. It looks like we have 11 responses for people who want deck help. So anybody else who wants in, if you want a chance here at the first shot, fill out that Google Doc. It's going to be the uh, your quick opportunity to, to get on the list. Uh, however, anybody coming in late, still eligible to get on the list. It's not, uh, nobody's blocked out because you weren't here in the beginning. So uh, let me give the link again. There you go. For anybody who needs it. Uh, I hope whenever we get another Hooglandia open to cast it with Jeff. Uh, I've never been asked to. I don't think I would turn it down. But yeah, I've never been asked to do a Hooglandia open. I think they have their group of casters and friends of Jeff that do it. And that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. I don't have the right or deserve to do every single <laughs> commentary job. You know, there's other good magic personalities out there, too, that are also doing some good work. Uh, he'll come back one day. He said it's his drug. Fair. Uh, historic is fine. Uh, my expertise is in standard. I do play some historic. I have played magic for a long time, so I could help you. It's just not my preferred format, uh, generally speaking. All right. Let me switch scenes here, and then we're going to see if all my stuff works, because I don't know if it does. <laughs> I set up a lot of the stuff in the last, like, 48 hours as I'm trying to make the stream better for everybody. So, yeah, this is what you should be seeing when you go to that document. So if you don't know, this is what you should see. You just have to put in your username. You put in your deck link, and that is it. You don't need anything else. And then I will pick somebody here in just a second. There's a $3,400 stimulus check talk at the White House. That would be exciting. <laughs> you and Huey had some of the chillest commentary vibe together. Both your magnet. I'll tell you what's fun about Huey. And this, this is what I like about having different commentary partners. Is like, I've worked with Martin Juza twice as well, right? And Juza is very like upbeat, up tempo, very chatty, right? Somebody like Reed is a little subdued, but very knowledgeable. And the cool thing about Reed is Reed remembers a lot of things. So stuff that I said last time we worked together or that I brought up at the beginning of our broadcast, he remembers and brings it up later, which is very cool. And then somebody like Huey is super chill, right? He's way laid back in his seat and speaks really slow and calm and whatever. And, you know, each one of those people, when I work with them, I speak differently to them. I ask them different questions. I use a different pacing, right? So it's kind of fun for me to meet the person before we go live, figure out what they like to do, how much they know about the format currently, whatever, and then use that to get the right information out of them. And 
the, honestly, I felt like when I worked with Huey, that's the most I've heard him talk on a broadcast and have fun with it. You know, so I felt pretty good about it when we were all done. Ah, uh, thank you, Fable Hero. I'm just glad the music's not too loud. So. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy working with Reed. Reed is awesome, man. He really is a super nice guy. I can't say enough good things. All right, so we're going to go in here. I have 13 people. So let's see who number 11 was. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Alpha Gator. All right, well, let's check out Alpha Gator's response here. Uh, do, 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 do. I think that's who that was. Maybe it wasn't. Let me go up to number 11 again. Make sure. I don't want to get somebody's hopes up. It is Alpha Gator. All right. Looks like Alpha Gator used Aether Hub. So I will go into Aether Hub. I will pull up that deck list. I will load it here into Arena. And then everybody can see it and we can talk about it. Because that's how this is going to work. All right. Let me take this. Copy that. Fantastic. I will go in here to decks. And then we will import the deck list. And apparently I'm missing a card or two that's in this list, but let's see what it is. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So we've got what looks to be a black and green deck list. Some interesting numbers of a couple of things. Uh, so we're trying to mutate. All right. So one of the things I like to ask Alpha Gator, assuming you're still in the chat, I need you to raise your hand so I know you're, I'm able to ask you questions and talk to you about things. But I want to also ask, what are you generally having problems with or what are you trying to solve other than just like make it better? I got to got to know some like actual things so I know where to start with. And if you have any resource issues, so are you OK on wild cards or whatever, or should we not? include enough more rares or mythics or whatever the problem is so we will give alpha gator about a minute here to respond if not i will go to the next person because it's only worth helping people if you're live that's that's kind of thing all right well you probably want to use your youtube name david not just uh whatever name you have in the chat is what i need to see so i know who i'm talking to so I'm, okay i'm gonna assume david is alpha gator all right uh, looks like Guru Master, uh, you create. It looks a little bit like that, but in Golgari. Sure. Not quite the same, though. It's doing some very different things. Okay, so still, same questions apply, David. What is it that you're trying to solve? What are you having problems with? Uh, and, like, your resources. You know, um, and maybe I'll include that in the next document. So y'all can just have that, and then I'll know ahead of time. All right. Late game answers. Okay. Then I don't think you need Cultivate in this list. I don't think it's really doing anything. Uh, you, you, It's not a bad card, but ultimately you have Lotus Gerba. You have Gilded Goose. Like At some point, you need to be casting other things with three mana and not Cultivate. Like That's not helping you. So I would cut those. Probably add one more Florahedron. Uh, this is draining your opponent. I don't really love this either because this is pretty much relying on you already having other things that are multi-stacked mutate. So not a fan of this card. If I was a concern, I would probably just play the one that, um, uh, let me see. The one that whenever you mutate, you get to kill something. This guy, Dirge Bat, and it has flash. Granted, it does cost more. I mean, I get that that's an issue. But truthfully, you're I, I can't like I don't know how often I've seen people drain with this more than like four or five life, maybe. So I'm not the biggest fan of this card. I don't think you really get that much out of it. Adding death touch is fine, but doesn't really do much. Uh, I don't even know if this like this deck only needs one, maybe two Ugin because you're your best chance is you're hoping to hit it with an Sterics. And I don't know why there's not four Sterics, honestly. That should have been Insta if you're going to do this. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, it's going to sacrifice a creature. Yeah, again, I would cut this and I'd rather just have these. Like, 
why even give your opponent if you're gonna spend that much mana on it just get the thing that you can just keep killing stuff like this is just better um boneyard lurker not really great i mean it's not bad but it's kind of just a four four for four i feel like you could probably do a little better um trying to think what else i would do that like here, here's the tough part, right? Like I, I get why people want to play Scoot Swarm, and I'm not going to tell you not to play Scoot Swarm, but understand that Scoot Swarm is not that great of a card. It, I only liked it in the deck I was playing recently because I have the opportunity to kill the opponent with the Terror of the Peaks, right? Even if I don't even get the six land, if I somehow play a Terror of the Peaks on like turn four. And, or like a Scoot Swarm on three and a Terror Peaks on four, like I could still just copy once or twice and win, right? Uh, I I get it. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying if you're talking about like here's the problem, like the way Standard is set up, you're gonna have a lot of spot removal killing your stuff. So it's fine to have Bone Yard Bone Yard Lurker to get something back, but I don't know. I honestly, if if I'm being hundred percent honest, I think if you really want to play Mutate, I like going Green Red or Green Blue more than I like Green Black, because at least Red gives you more ways to kill. You also get random stuff like Bone Crusher Giant, whatever if you want to play that. Blue also gives you things to bounce your opponent's stuff that are cheaper and efficient. You get to draw cards. Not stuff you get in black. So I think this just cleaning up your list a little bit and giving you more consistent cards is probably as far as we're going to be able to go with it. Because like this, I still want to replace this, honestly. I'm, I'm not so... Matter of fact, if I was going to do something, I might even just replace it with something like uh, the Symbiote just gaining life is good giving plus an extra plus and plus one is good makes your stuff more threatening so you could spread out your threats if you wanted to uh might even go with this since you can still cast it and this gets stuff back from the yard and i'd rather have that than like yeah i'm just not the insatiable thing i'm just not a fan of at all honestly it's not again it's not awful i'm just not a big fan um yeah, I don't know what I want the last two slots to be. I'm sure there's some recommendations. Scoot Swarm is more of a combo piece in a certain deck. So. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people lose because they're so busy trying to make like 52 Scoot Swarm tokens. And I told people, like, if you watch my video, I literally try to make just enough to win. That's it. I'm not trying to make 100 tokens. Like, that's irrelevant. Like, if I can't kill my opponent before I have 100 tokens, then something happened. You know? Um... Uh, uh, we're going to be doing the giveaway probably in about an hour. Um, more of a combo piece of start decks. What are the key cards in this deck that he wants to play with? Don't know. That's up to David to answer. Hemophage, greater than Dirge Bat, more ramp creatures with Land of War. There you go. Now that I can get with. I'm still a big, I'm a much bigger fan of Dirge Bat. I am. But if you want to play two visionaries, that I can be talked into. Because that at least helped cast stuff like Sterics and whatnot down the road. But you already have like Goose, you got Cobra, you got Florahedron, and now Visionary. I think that's plenty. And the deck does need some defenses. And right now, other than Hagra Mauling, you don't really have a way to kill your opponent's stuff. I mean, technically you have Ugin, but that's way later. So, you know, I could be honestly, I could even be talked into just cutting Boneyard Lurker. And just going up on extra visionaries. Uh, also, by the way, if I'm sniffling, don't worry. I don't have the COVID. I actually got a COVID test this week. Came back negative, so I'm good. Uh, and I don't even mean that jokingly. I mean that in dead seriousness, because I know that's a bad thing right now. Uh, Boneyard Lurker, small cost, mutates. And definitely with Dirge Bat. I don't know. I, okay. I, I'm not sure, but if people want to do it, feel free to do it. I, I'm not going to argue with people. If it makes you feel good, it's it's ultimately your deck. Do what you want to do. But 
yeah, this is probably closer to what I would do. When did you put the dirge bat in the stack? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to say as far away I can from many people anyway, whether I have COVID or not, I don't want it. But yeah, this is probably the best we can do here, I think, David. This is, this is, there may be some other things included. I Like, I could go up another visionary, potentially, and cut something else. You know, trim some numbers here or there. But this is probably better. I honestly, I don't know, let's see how many, like, if you have Mutate stuff, you've got Dirge Bat, you got Gym Razor, Great Horn, Sterix, Nathroy, Bone Luck. Like, even if you cut Bone Lurker, you still have quite a few, and you could just go up to a full set of Visionaries, which are probably just going to be better. Because you need mana more than anything else in this deck. Uh, how much mana do you have, anyway? Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 7 is 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Though, that's really like 22 and a half... But you also have the mana creatures. So yeah, that's probably mostly fine. I would probably try this. This is pr something like this is probably closer to what I would go with. I like this better. Because this actually gives you enough mana to guarantee you can cast Sterics on time or have mana to do like Gilded Goose and Great Horn or something or whatever. And then if you want to get to Nathroy after they've wiped your board or something, now you can go ahead and still cast this and not feel so bad. Uh, I don't think it's that. I just think, like, spending the four mana to get, like, a thing back isn't as good as just being able to power out your other stuff. Or I can just wait, get a couple more mana, and then just play Nathroy and get ten things back. Or not ten things. Get, like, three things back from the graveyard. You know what I mean? No, there's 60 cards. Add a planes for passages. You don't need to though. Like you have Cobra and you have Gilded Goose. And you're not trying to cast Nathroy. You're trying to just mutate it anyway. And you can mutate with green. So you don't re you need zero white lands in this list. Yeah, you have you have eight ways to make white mana if you need to. For some reason, like so let's just say you just feel the need to cast Nathroy because that's the situation you're in. You have ways to do it. But if not, you really just want to play the mutate cost. So that's what I'd be looking to do most of the time. Uh, against Mill and Rogues, it's reasonable, but it's still slow. It's not progressing your plan to be what you want, right? Your plan is simply to... Is there music? Yes, I have it very quietly in the back, apparently. But if your plan should just be getting things out and being able to mutate onto them. Like, playing a thing and just getting something out of the yard is okay, but not really your deck's game plan. You know what I mean? Uh, that's how we want it, Garrick. Gareth. We don't want uh, the music to be overpowering. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's what I would do. So yeah. All right. Yeah, that wasn't bad though. Like I said, I, it's a fine deck, but I think consistency is kind of what this deck wants. And now I feel like having those extra pieces of mana, being able to draw extra cards, now having more kill cards, so you're not just worried about your opponent landing like one or two big things while you're waiting to set up. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Uh, Polokranos is fine but again i'm not sure like if you're worried about mill decks i would play Polacranos. maybe even in place of like dirge bat and something else like one to throw in one dirge bat if that's a thing you want to do i mean main dirge rex is gonna make sure but again what do you cut like i think people say that all the time like that's another thing too y'all i want to point that out like it seems like almost every day somebody in the comments says Oh, but you could play this card and you should play this card and you play it's like cool but what do you cut that's always the first thing you should be able to ask yourself like if you're going to put a thing in what are you taking out because if you just start pulling things well now your deck's going to get further away from doing what it's trying to do at some point 
if you're playing a theme like this one's trying to really take advantage of mutate you have to give yourself the opportunity to really do that right if you start taking out all these things your deck's not going to do the thing it's trying to do um so like like an example if we say all right what if we wanted to play polacranos right so we say all right fine polacranos is a reasonable card if you're worried about a lot of mill decks that's a thing you can play out of the graveyard and we have enough mana creatures that maybe we can get it out efficiently. So it's like, okay, that's not too bad. But then what do you pull? So you look over at the list and say like, all right, well, Polokranos can kill things. So maybe we say we need one less Dirge Bat in place of one, right? Like that's a thing. And then we can say, all right, Nathroi's goal is to pull stuff out of the graveyard, but Polokranos also comes out of the graveyard by itself. And it's like a 12-12 when we do. So maybe since the cost is still a little bit cheaper, we could pull the one and do that. And there you go, right? So now we said, okay, we want to play a card. We found reasonable slots we could replace, still solve some of the same problems and have a reasonable creature, right? So that's a thing you can do. But to just keep pulling stuff, uh, the Florahedrons are important to this list. They really are. One, it increases more lands for Lotus Cobra. And it just gives you more mana to be able to cast your Sterics and your, uh, like, Nathroys, Ugins, whatever, on time. So, and again, this isn't a deck about putting stuff in the graveyard. And finding a creature doesn't do anything for this list because you want to be able to mutate onto it. Just putting the thing into play doesn't do anything in this list. So, like, and plus, if your other thing is, like, a three-card mutate stack, you're never going to want to sacrifice that to the Fiend Artisan. So that doesn't help you either. So like, Fiend Artisan's a fine card, but in this particular list, just swapping a creature for a creature doesn't necessarily solve anything. Like maybe in a few circumstances, like you get rid of a thing that costs three to go get a Scoot Swarm or whatever, but even then you'd have to be getting rid of like a Visionary to go get a Scoot Swarm, but then now you don't have the mana to cast the bigger thing to put onto the Scoot Swarm. So that doesn't even help greatly, honestly. Uh, you can just put the link to wherever you are housing the deck list, whatever website that is, and I will get it from there. Uh, but yeah, David, look at this. I would say try this out and then, you know, hit us up on the Discord and let us know how this is working out for you. Or if it's not helping or whatever, and we can make changes down the road. But yeah, I think, think that's a reasonable start from where you were. All right, let me go in. I'm gonna grab another deck list here from our document. Uh, by the way, those of you that showed up here late, let me grab that link one more time. If you would like to have an opportunity to get help with your deck, go here to this link and fill out the information. You just have to put in your username as it appears in the chat, please, and the link to wherever you house your deck. All right, so I'm gonna go in here. We're gonna try, let's go for number two. Let's see who the number two person was to put their uh, information in here. So number two was uh, Zakirel has a deck list over at MTG Goldfish. So let me go put this in there. I will snag that. Do, 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 do. Uh, it says, this deck is not legal due to the following reasons. Sideboard must... Okay, that's fine. And most can... All right, no problem. We can work with that, I think. Oh, this is a Yorian list. Yay, me. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't find Yorian lists very entertaining, but I'm still going to help you because that's what I said I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, let me see what I got here. Not sure how I feel about this. There's a lot of odd numbers, though. All right. So let's see what we've got. Love to see a Leyline Tyrant deck. Uh, go check out my VODs over on twitch.tv slash powerdragon and just look at my video saved. The one from last... This past Monday? Yeah, actually, yeah, just from this week. Just look at the one for Monday. The last, like, 20 minutes of that video, we built a red deck that has Leyline Tyrant. Also has Perforos. 
Okay, so we've got glass casting. Um, hmm. Okay, so this comes in. You scry to name a card. When you cast a card, you draw cards. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Um, what are we trying to do with this? This the pace had gotten error. You're in from the sideboard. Oh, that's fine. Not a big deal. Because honestly, I'm not sure what there is to do to this. Is just like choosing cards you have a preference over. Like, I may not play like Metamized Prophecy, and I probably wouldn't play the Cleric. Probably want to play a, four copies of Skyclave Apparition, which you're already playing. Yeah, like this. This is an example, and, the, and I'm not taking shots at Zakiril here, but like. There's nothing to really doctor here. We'd just be changing like four or five cards and the list is going to be mostly the same. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that's that's the problem here. Like if you're just sharing a list that's already stock, I'm probably not going to spend a lot of time on it just because there's there's we just be nitpicking and then we're just talking like basic standard strategy at that point. And there's there's not much really to include otherwise. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like we could we could plus or minus a couple things like I would say Metamind's Prophecy. I'm not a big fan of, so I could cut that, right? Maybe play like one more Negate, knowing there's a fair amount of uh, Yori Index. Go up on the Shatter the Sky. Uh, you're already playing a full set of... Maybe go up to another Omen of the Sun, so I can cut like a Glass Pool Mimic. I mean, but yeah, this is not that far from any other version of Blue-White Yori. I mean, this is this is kind of it. Uh, I don't even know if you, like, no, because Dance of the Mantis, you just start messing with your mana. That I really wouldn't want want to do. But yeah, I mean, Zakiril, the deck's fine. I mean, it, it looks like Azorius Yori Index. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say there. I mean, like, it's it's literally the the deck you expect it to be. I mean, like I said, like Skyclave Cleric, I might play some other modal double face card. You know, but in general, this this is pretty close to what a lot of the lists look like. Like, you know, I might play an extra Mayor's Call instead of a Seagate Restoration or something. But there's there's really not a lot here. This is this is just like personal taste tweaking more than really just making the deck much better. But yeah. The at least the shadow of the skies and stuff I would have changed, and the metamized prophecy doesn't really need to be in the list. That that's probably all I would do to it, and I th and I think that's it for the most part, honestly. Not not much else to do there. Uh, yeah, if y'all just share a stock list and be like, hey, here's my deck, it's like, oh, well, cool. But a lot of people already have the better versions of that deck, so I'll just give you the info that they already have or the list they already have, and that's probably be good. Well, yeah, there you go. Charming Prince. That's the card that was missing. Good call, Ellie. Like, play the Charming Princes. There you go. That's the thing you should do, because you just get into the, uh... Uh... Loops with... Yorian. So, how about this? Uh... Here we go. Also, can't take credit for that. That's a stock thing that the Yorian list already do, so... There you go. Probably just do that. Yeah, as I'm saying, Faye is fine. You can go fish stuff out of your sideboard. Like, you can return it to your hand to go get something else later if your hand's kind of stuck. That sort of thing. Oh, weird. It's letting me put extra Shadow of the Skies, even though I put the other one's main. That's peculiar. Huh. All right, whatever. Not sure what happened there. Oh, I guess one of the Yorians should be... No, no, you have that. Yeah. Yeah, it has too many Yorians accounted for. I don't know what it's... It must be an update thing that caused a problem. All right, just something like that. There you go. <laughs> That's fine. Not every single thing needs to have... Like, some cards are just good because they're good, right? 
If, if it doesn't have Yorian's synergy with Yorian, that's fine. Everything else does. I'm okay with that. So, yeah. But anyway, this is mostly it. I would make these changes. Charming Prince, Glass Casket, Birth of Miletus, Fay of Wishes, Negate, Omen of the Sea, Omen of the Sun, Skyclave Apparition, two Disputes, full set of Archons, three Shatter, three Elspeth Cocker's Death, three Orion, two Shark Typhoons, one Sublime Epiphany. Personal preference, if you want to do Amaria's Call, Seagate Restoration, I'd probably go three and two versus two and three, but that's up to you. Castle Arden Vale and the lands. I'm not even going to touch them. They can stay the same. Uh, nope, Zork. Not looking for them. Honestly, I think there's enough Yorian decks as it is. <laughs> All right. Let me hop over. Again, if you want to be included and have your deck looked at, feel free to go to this link, which I'm about to post yet again. I'll have some mods in here at some point once I start doing more of these streams regularly. But you can go there, and then I will choose at random. My list has grown. There are now 18 people. So we are going to go with number six, whoever number six is. Let's see. Number six is Daniel Escudero. And this Aetherhub link is, let's see what type of deck list this is. This could be fun. It looks like this is a best of one deck. A Gruel deck, person after my own heart. We can work with this. All right, this this should be different. Let's open this up and see what we got here. All right. Uh, Lord Fifth, I highly disagree. Fay of Wishes is totally fine, even in best of three. I am not sure why you would make that statement. Uh, if you go back and look at any decks that have played Fae of Wishes in tournaments, those tournaments are best of three, and there's a reason they still play Fae of Wishes. Uh, not really sure where to go with that argument otherwise, but it's already been proven that that statement is not true. Now, do you have a slightly bigger advantage in best of one because you can go to a sideboard when other people can't and you get 15 cards worth of more options? Absolutely. But is it still good in best of three? Yes. Uh, okay. Lots of cards I like. Looks like there's still some questions here, though. Uh, first things first, Wilt. I just wouldn't bother playing main deck. Yeah, you, you either... Well, this is best of one, though, so I do have to keep that in mind. Hold on. All right. If that's the case, then I don't want Wildborn Preserver, and I probably want additional Wilt. I don't think I want inscriptions before I've maxed out my primal mites. And there's just too many cards in this list. So that's a problem too. Uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> like, things to fix. We have 5, 9, 17, uh, 24, 25 lands and no other double face cards. Okay. Bone Crusher Giant and Harbinger are both really good matter of fact i would probably cut radas to play more bone crushers and harbingers i think just having more removal is going to be better served for you and harbinger is actually hard for a lot of spot removal decks to deal with right now especially if you're playing against like rakdos midrange or something like that the best thing they can do is put like a death toucher in front of it and those bone crusher giants can help you clear the way for those um That's fine, Lord Fifth. Like, some of them don't, and that's fine. Like, not every list has to look the same. I am totally okay with that. I understand there are other options. I think there are a lot of ways you could play a lot of decks like Yorian because you have 80 slots to goof around with. But that's not something I'm going to spend too much time harping on because the deck itself pretty much does what it wants to do most of the time. Not, like, just what it wants to do, but, like, plays a certain way all the time plus or minus four to eight cards you want to swap in it uh for cycling well yeah sure but a lot of cards are good for cycling so i don't even count that when i'm talking about whether a card's playable or not uh for deck lists i i it's fine in this list because again you're playing best of one and you just want some options you're not gonna have otherwise but my question is 
is wilt significantly better than you just having like if i cut the two wilts could you just have four gym razors and is that just better yeah i think that's a thing i would consider because i think it's another creature and by cutting that extra wilt you open up the door for you to play something else whether that's like an additional primal might or an ember cleave or i don't know one of the dragons are your choice or whatever it just opens up more possibilities is the thing so i would consider that also even actually i might even just go minus one that plus one that and just change turn timber into a thing oh hey it looks like my notifications are working that's fantastic thank you so much for that benjamin uh yeah i didn't have that set up last time so now that is also a very cool emoji that's super awesome but it's going great today <laughs> and we're gonna have a cool giveaway in about 30 minutes so lots of stuff happening yeah definitely want hinge i'm getting around to that i'm just trying to figure out like what i would trim from this pile uh probably a scavenging ooze because we don't need four oozes all the time because one if one sticks you've already removed a lot of the stuff the second or the third one would eat i might even cut a ram through Honestly, let's let's try this because like we're going up on Bone Crusher Giants, right? So you have a full set of Bone Crushers, you got Shatter Skull Smashing, you can go to a full set of Primal Mites. Uh, jeez, cut a Harbinger. How many creatures I can lose? This twenty six. Still a lot of creatures. Play one Great Hinge. Really, you probably want two Great Hinge. Really. I'm just trying to figure out, like, where I would squeeze it. And really, the only place is probably cutting a gym razor. Might be the only thing you could do there. Actually, not even true. Believe it or not, I would probably cut a Stone Coil Serpent if I was going to do that. And I would probably do something like this. And this is probably better. Like, now you have enough cheap things. You have a little more removal in the deck that's more solid between Bone Crusher Giant, the extra Primal Mites. Gym Razor's now replacing those Wilts that you had in there. Questing Beast still being good. Obviously, Ember Cleave still good. Turn Timber Symbiosis to give you an extra bit of mana. But if you don't need it later, maybe you can go find a creature. And then Great Hinges to, like, extend the game out, I think is going to help you. No, I don't think you need to split Coil with Ram Throughs. I mean, I, I get you know, the synergy or whatever, but truthfully, the coil is the only thing you have that tramples anyway, I think, in this list. So, and, and Ram Through is kind of neat with B Questing Beast because it has Death Touch, but truthfully, if you're getting stuff out of the way or you're just getting too many cards with Great Hinge or you draw one of the other Primal Mites, you're probably going to be just as well off anyway. Uh, By the way, how are you today, sir? Good to see you on YouTube again. I am actually doing pretty well today. Um pretty excited i got some of my different notifications set up on here so when people subscribe or donate or whatever i have things that show up on the screen now i have a friend that's going to be working on some of those to help me uh clean them up a little bit so i get some things that make more sense uh also here let me ask chat a question while i have a second here i obviously i don't know if y'all know but youtube has a thing where you can have memberships to your channel and give away kind of it's almost like patreon for youtube right you can pay whatever the three dollars or five dollars whatever the channel sets and get exclusive things or content or whatever my question is what would be interesting to y'all uh if you have a question about mutate golgari i would say when this stream is over go back and watch the first like 30 minutes of the stream we covered that deck for somebody else earlier uh would y'all be interested in doing a membership and if so, what would you want for that? Would you want like an extra video a week only for people that are members? Would you want access to certain things? Maybe the opportunity to be part of giveaways? Uh, I don't know. Like there's a lot of things I could do with it. I, I don't have it instituted right now, but I would just think about like in the future, what would we want that to look like? I'll obviously like include different symbols and notifications so like whenever you show up in the chat like it'll show that you're a member and things like that which would be cool so all that stuff would just be part of it but i was thinking about like something extra to do or something extra to give you 
that would be worth it. What would be interesting for that? Because I'm not too sure, you know, or I don't know, maybe personalized opportunity to get decks looked at every month. Uh, I don't know. It's like I, I feel like there's just like a lot of things that could be done, but I just want to if I, I only want to do it if I think I can give value to y'all for doing it. That's the thing. I like as much as I would appreciate the money, like I don't want it to be just about y'all like helping keep me financially stable, right? If I do it, I want to be able to give something back to you too. So I just got to figure out what that looks like. But like, anyway, it's something I was thinking about yesterday. So maybe on the horizon in the next like couple of weeks, once I can figure out what I want that to look like and what I think is worthwhile for y'all to be able to have some things. Uh, that's the problem, Anthony, though. Like coaching sounds cool, but the problem is how could I justify, like say, I don't know, let's say a hundred of y'all think it's awesome, right? So a hundred of y'all sign up to be members. Well, how can I guarantee time for coaching for uh, like even half those people if they want it every month, right? Like that's that's the problem. So something like that I couldn't really do. It would have to be something that I could either give to somebody or something that I can create or post that that whole group can enjoy. You know, so it's like a mass thing I can share. Otherwise, once you start getting into individualized stuff outside of maybe, like I said, like deck help or deck text, because I could look at deck lists and do like quick notes and stuff or whatever and help you out. And that's that's something I could do probably like take a day's worth of time and go through all the lists that people submit. I could probably do that. But anything beyond that, I mean, when, if you do coaching, you're talking about having to dedicate like an hour plus per person for whatever their issue is or walking through a game of arena with them or something or whatever however that looks unless maybe there's like a i have to look maybe there's like a premium membership i don't know and then maybe that those people can get coaching every month i probably could do that but i don't know if it's something i could do for like a i don't know three dollar a month fee or something i i think that would be difficult as well as members only chat and the discord uh i could do that but i don't know if i want to I feel like the Discord is better served with everybody being able to participate and be active. Hosting tournaments with prizes for these people. Uh, again, I think it's a neat idea, but that's another amount of time that, you know, when I'm doing YouTube videos every day, doing streams now four times a week, doing a podcast, possibly doing commentary on the weekends. Like, I don't know when I would even squeeze it in to run the full tournament. You know what I mean? So that probably can't happen. Uh, could you have a match with one of us once a week or something like that's sure but I already have people that do that on Twitch like you can just go in and if you hang out in my channel you collect points and then you can just spend the points and we can play if you want to so that's a thing that totally happens already uh, there have been champions on me yeah and that's what I was thinking about Lord Fifth I'll have to research it a little bit more and maybe the upper tier there's some cool personalized things we can do and that's something I can make available Cause you know, like if it's like up to, I don't know, 10 slots, I could probably dedicate that to give some personalized time every month, you know, to maybe up to 10 people. But if it's, like I said, I don't know if there's like 50 people or a hundred people, like I, I don't think I could do that. That'd be too difficult. Raffle for commander webcam games. Uh, maybe that's a thing possibly. That's, that's an idea. Cause that's like hour and a half, two hours. That's probably something we could do. And then I could stream it so people can come watch. Because we can do that on Spell Table. So, like, that's totally a thing we could do. And I could, and that's something I take care of, like, three people at one time. So, like, that's doable. Uh, for the coaching, so you're not taking... Yeah, but I, I... I think it fit... Like, it's one thing when you do a raffle and one person wins something. I think everybody's okay. When one person gets a very personal thing and everybody else doesn't, I think it could start becoming a feel bad and I would have a concern about that. I don't want people like, I want there to just feel like there's a winner more than there are a bunch of losers. You know what I mean? And whatever drawings or giveaways or special thing that happens. Like, so it, it's, it's a fine line. And I know I'm like, you know, it's a very small difference, but I'm trying to be very careful about it. Uh, that's true now and uh, now robert that's one of those things that 
I have considered just doing anyway and just having like a series of those videos. The biggest problem I think I have is I'm trying to do stuff in a way that it's not just creating heuristics for people, right? Because I think everybody wants to start building decks or wants to start playing magic in a certain way and like, oh, well, I need to know what to do with this. And it's like a lot of magic is like, it depends. You know what I mean? It's like, well, how many lands should I have? Well, it depends. You know, what should I do in this situation? Eh, it depends, right? So I want to try to do it in a way that I'm almost teaching skills more than teaching rules. And that's a very tough thing to do. And I'm not even sure I can do it, honestly. But I, I have some ideas. I've been keeping notes on some things that I may test a couple of videos just to see how they go over with the public. But yeah, it's it's a it's a hard thing because I think people want to just be told, I want to do this so I can be better. And it's like, okay, I can I can tell you like, okay, if you're building a deck that does this, you should do it this way. But the problem is like, change two or three cards and that's different. Or the metagame changing makes the choices different or whatever, right? So I want to teach you like, okay, when you're trying to build a deck, here's like, I don't know, 50 different things you're looking for or ideas or whatever, and then understanding why each of those things are what they are. And then you can do with that what you will. Yeah, I guess, if that makes sense. I don't know, I feel like I'm rambling now. Maybe get a single card with your autograph. Well, that's cool, we can do that. I can autograph some dragons and send them out. <laughs> uh, yeah, same thing, Cardenas. That's a thing that we do over, like, Benjamin, that's a thing we do on the Twitch channel. Again, you can just spend the points and then I'll just play your deck. The thing is, I can't really do that on YouTube. Problem being is, that's this is gonna sound absolutely terrible and I, and I know it as I'm saying it, but it's bad for content, right? Like if I just take somebody's random deck and I put it up on YouTube, I'm gonna get like 50% of the views I normally get because people aren't looking for the random idea or whatever like i already get fewer views when i play decks that aren't easily to cla easy to classify metagame decks right i already get lower views for that so like just taking somebody's random deck and putting it up probably i'd still take a hit most likely um yeah i thought about that too merch we can totally do that's a thing you know i i do by the way have merchandise for anybody who hasn't seen it uh let me grab the link just so i can make my sales pitch <laughs> but yeah uh let me grab this here actually whoop i was about to do that and then end up on the wrong page because i'm terrible uh dun, 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 dun. here we go but yeah haven't I have, well i don't know i've had like nine orders so i'm doing okay i guess <laughs> Oh, because I'm on the different thing. Yeah, I keep forgetting when it, I use stream elements. If I'm logged in as Twitch or as YouTube, I have to go to different pages. It's so strange. I don't know why they don't leave them on the same. But it is what that is. Anyway, here, let me share my link. So if you would like to support me and get something for yourself, t-shirts, mugs, mouse pads, whatever, there's some merch. Feel free to check it out. All right, cool. So those are good ideas. I will take those into consideration. We still have about 15, 20 minutes before we do this giveaway thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out another submission for another deck thing. So we're up to 20 now, this is awesome. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go with number 17, whoever number 17 is. It is Gareth K. And it looks like Gareth put their deck list over on Goldfish. All right, so let's see what we got here. Just Guy Spells. All right, this would be a fun one. This is something a little bit different. I can appreciate that. It's definitely not gonna be something that's just everybody's playing, so this should be a little bit different. Do, do, do. Let's import. All right, Just Guy Spells. Let's see what we've got here. I don't know why it does this and gives me like the random versions of things. Like if I have full sets of it it should just be set to give me well i don't have full sets of either one of them what what's going on i know i have more crash throughs hold on 
Oh, I had a full set of M21 ones, but it was giving me the other one. All right, whatever. I just have to clean this up so it makes sense whenever I'm talking about it. I do. I know I'm short on one pathway, so that's fine. Uh, it does this on the Fable passages, too. All right. So, Gareth, or, or Gareth, there we are. Okay, cool. All right, we are in the chat. Uh, so, same question applies. What are you having trouble with with this particular list? What is it you're trying to solve or figure out? Send some jank porky parrot for the win. I, I had a porky parrot list, actually. I kind of enjoyed it, to be honest. Uh, and before we get too deep in this, I will say... This is kind of a tough thing, because... These lists already struggle a lot. I think I've tried building three or four different, even just is it spells list. And I think they're just underpowered in general, you know? I, I, and this isn't a knock on anybody building these. I think it's totally fine. But I think you just have to know going in that you're going to struggle in a lot of matchups just because your creatures and cards just aren't as powerful or as big as what a lot of people are doing, right? Like. Black has good just spot removal. Your damage does like two or three damage, right? The green has bigger creatures. White has the board sweepers you don't have, you know. I feel like this is too slow versus aggro decks or the last game isn't good enough against the slower decks. Uh, That's interesting because you have shocks and rebukes and stuff. I would think you would be okay against the aggro decks, at least in the early game. I mean, Vadrix lets you get a three mana thing out of your yard. So that's not bad. Stormwing Entity is fine, but it doesn't pump itself permanently, which feels like a little bit of a trap. Uh, let's see. When you cast, let's put that in there and see what we bring up. Because I know there's a couple other cards. Let's take the white out entirely. All right. Uh, you could get by maybe trying to play some Seagate Stormcallers if you wanted to get double use out of a couple things. That could be kind of interesting. I'm not sure where it would fit just yet, but it's something to keep in mind while we're doing this. And I want to say, like, well, that's only to end turn two, so that doesn't really help. Hmm. Uh, Riddle Form's a, a solid card, but I'm not sure, again, how much better it is than other stuff we're playing or what we replace. You got 7, 8, 11, 16, 21, 22, and 5 is 27. That is quite a lot of mana. Don't think it's necessarily bad, though. Um... I think my concern, like Vadrex is an okay card, right? It first strikes and whatever, but if you don't mutate it, it feels worse than all the other cards you can play in here. And you're playing some white mana that kind of slows your deck down at times, potentially. So my question is, do we even need Vadrex in this list? Because otherwise, I mean, it's a 3-3 first striker, which isn't awful, but it does cost three different color mana to make that happen, right? And the ability is only good, the card's only good, really, if you get to mutate it. But you only have three copies to be able to mutate and get that replay value. You know, so what if we considered just not even playing the white mana, right? And just took that out. What if we took out... I don't know how good these lands are for this deck either, because I feel you already are at a disadvantage in giving up some life in a couple of matchups, especially if you're having trouble against aggro decks. I might consider cutting these, though I do I do like what they're trying to do. I might just cut them, though. I don't know if they're really necessary. Because your goal isn't even to get to a long game where these matter. For sure, a Seagate Restoration, you're probably never going to cast. You you actually, like, hope you never cast it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's sad to say, but, like, you hope you never have to cast Seagate Restoration. Shatter Skull Smashing is at least okay at, like, two mana sometimes. Or, I mean, four mana, just to be able to kill a two toughness or kill two one ones. 
So like, I don't mind this card, but I think we can we can trim a little bit and still leave you plenty of mana. And now we're now we're starting to open up some slots. Uh, this is a bit of an aggro deck. You are you are correct. And really, your best card piling sec is Magmatic Chandler. So we can't cut too many spells, right? Because we've got 4, 8, 12, 16. And then if Shatter Skull Smashing goes to the yard, right? So we only have 17. So we can't really cut too many. We almost have to think about other things that go in here. Uh, Narset's kind of cool. But I don't think it really fits. I do, I, I'm intrigued by this card, but I feel like it might also be a trap. <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like, ugh, like it's just so, like, but this is a wizard, so randomly maybe you get another bonus, but it just feels like it probably isn't quite good enough. But at the same time, if you cast like Shock Opt Ram Through, this thing's like a 7-3 plus, you know, and maybe, maybe that's enough. I don't know. But what else would I include in this list? I mean, Riddle Form, also fine. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just trying to think if there's other creatures I really want in here that don't exist at the moment. But I might try a couple of Seagate Stormcallers and Riddle Form. Maybe something like this is closer? Because Seagate, even for just like just playing it straight up for two and then copying a shock or copying a brazen borrower's petty theft could be good enough to slow the opponent down i do like bone crusher as well i'm just trying to like i'm just trying to figure out if you do like do we just not play storm caller and we cut one of something else to play the bone crusher giants i mean because we already have a lot of day you got shocks and you have rebukes and i guess shatter skull smashings you're not without options but i do like bone crusher bone crusher is probably the best red card probably has been for a while honestly um the thing i will say that like the one thing i will say for riddle form is it gets around stuff like blood chief's thirst right because they have to use it at sorcery speed so if you turn the riddle form into a creature on your turn they can't kill it so yeah i I don't know. I mean, if we don't play Stormcaller, then I think Bone Crusher Giant's your only other option. Yeah, I, I think, like, if we want to do this. And then you still have another creature you can fight with, and you didn't have to trim any spells, really. This could also be a realistic thing you could do. And even this feels better. You know? Uh, I don't I think if you're gonna like on riddle form you have to be doing at least two if I'm only doing one It's so random. I'm even gonna get it. I would just assume not play it Right because some of it's about consistency like you You have to be able to rely on getting cards so you can create a game plan, right? If you can never plan on drawing it Then it's just so random that it almost doesn't matter that it exists no, we don't need one. Obviously, we can change the mana. I'm just I'm just ignoring that for the time being. I'm assuming that the player understands you don't need white mana anymore. <laughs> like, I mean, we can we can I mean, if y'all just need me to take it out, I mean, I can. Uh, we can take out the triomes because we don't really need those anymore. Play a fabled passage. You already have all those. Eh, just bump these up till you get to the required number. There you go. Done. <laughs> like, like if it makes everybody feel better but i just assume we all knew we didn't need white man anymore but yeah th this is probably cleaner and you're not messing around worried about trying to mutate the three cards you had this gives you a little bit more removal with the bone crusher giants you get a couple extra things to attack with with the riddle form and like your creature count is now up to at least 17 you know which is something and a few more defensive cards so Uh, still, I still don't want to rely on that though. I'm playing two, or I'm playing at least two, or I'm playing none. Real, if I'm playing a one of, it usually has to be something either because it's a very expensive cost, or like if I do draw it in those corner case situations, it's going to win, right? 
I don't think Riddle Form fits either of those rules for me. Like, I, in those cards, you'd be talking about, like, Ugin, Great Hinge. Uh, I was going to say Embercleave, but even Embercleave, I'd want at least two. So, yeah, there's only a few things. Maybe, like, some random Planeswalkers that cost, like, five or six, like, Big Garrick or something like that. Like, those would fit that for me, where I might play one of in a list, right? Riddle Form's not that card. I, I, I'm I playing two plus, or I'm playing none. Because it's just as well the type of card that if I play it on two, it now becomes a thing my opponent has to deal with. You know what I mean? If I turn one Optoshock, turn two Riddle Form, now it's a thing my opponent's always going to be playing around because it exists. So it has even it even has more value because it's on the table. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm not saying it's outstanding either way. Like, a lot of cards in Magic are average, but they still are the right cards for a deck list. So, meh, that's fine. But I'm just saying, like, it, there's still some value to it existing. Uh, but yeah, either way, like I said, I think is it decks just do struggle a little bit as is. But I think this is an upgrade from where you were, for sure. And hopefully you have the wild cards to build this, because I think the only rare we really added was Bonecrusher Giant. So hopefully you have those cards or enough to build that. All right, so we're going to do, we have time to do one more quick deck list. And then we're going to get into this giveaway. So let me hop over. It looks like we have 21 people now. Uh, what number haven't we used? Let's see. Let's go with number four. Whoever was number four in the list. We will pick that one next. Number four was... Don Horshin. And, oh my goodness, the tech list says, Brushwag Stomping Party. I don't even know. I'm actually intrigued to see what this is. This sounds exciting. I hope it's good. <laughs> I have no idea what it's going to do, but let's take a look at it. All right. Go to decks. Because I have a discard. Yeah, yeah, I know. Let's import. No surprise, the mono green deck I had all the cards for. <laughs> all right, so Don Horkshin, uh, are you still in the chat? That's the most important thing. If you were still here, we can proceed. Uh, but yeah, that's what I was thinking too. This has to be like a trample list, right? But it's not, it's not at all. This is just like mono green. And I was super disappointed. I was hoping this was gonna be Something so much better than it was. <laughs> All right, hey, Don. All right, so here's the thing. Brushwag is not good. It's slightly below mediocre. And, and really, honestly, for my money, especially the way this deck is, uh, well, I say that. Let's see, you've got 15, again, trying to give me the extra passages, 19, 22 land, 23, 24, which is mostly fine. We are very heavy on the top end, and there's no great hinges in here. So already some things I, I have a few issues with. Uh, Scoot Swarm seems very irrelevant in this list. Your goal isn't to go wide with a bunch of 1-1s. One Your goal is to just smash the opponent, right? So Scoot Swarm's not really helping you get where you want to go. So I would just cut that all together. I don't think it's really doing anything. And I think you're missing out. Like, also Gilded Goose. Like, you don't need the other mana. Like, you're, you're, you're one color. Gilded Goose isn't going to do much for you here. Like, getting to play something a turn sooner is kind of nice, but the reality is you really should just be playing things that attack and fight and do more. That's not really what this is built for. So, like, if I were to make changes, first off, like, Great Hinge, this list probably needs at least two, maybe even three if you have the cards for it. I would probably cut one Gargaroth, because it's just pricey. Uh, cut brush legs. We may come back to that. Uh, play Swarm Shambler. 
because it's just an all around better card. It gets bigger easier without as much of a man investment. It also randomly can get you other counters if some of your other, or get you creatures if some of your other stuff with counters gets targeted. Uh, scavenging ooze. If I can spell, there we go. At least three of those. May, maybe even four, I don't know. And, uh, man, this list doesn't have Questing Beasts. It doesn't have Lovestruck Beasts. It doesn't have Primal Might. There's so many things I'd want to put in this list. Um, Hey, Wolfgar. I know spe most people hate it, but have you ever messed with Zenith Flare? Nope, not at all, because there's nothing to mess with. It's literally just build the cycling deck, play for Zenith Flare. Like, no nothing wrong with the deck. The deck is fine, but like, there's nothing to mess with. Like, you you literally just, I mean, you, you've, yeah, I mean, like, it's just you play the deck, right? You know what I mean? There's not anything to it. Yeah, it's like, totally fine. It's just, whatever. Um, all right. No sideboards. I'm assuming this is best of one. Uh, I do like the Mammoth a lot. I like Yorvo. Though Yorvo, maybe we cut one because Yorvo is legendary. So we can squeeze room for some stuff. Um, Primal Mites. Because that card's good. I'd actually rather have a full set of Primal Mites before a full, full set of Ram Thru's, honestly. Not that I hate Ram Thru. Ram Thru's a totally acceptable card. But, I mean, it's... Uh, I don't know. Maybe you go the other way. Maybe you go the other way. Because it is instant, and we are playing a few more expensive things. So maybe, maybe we do that. At least three and three. I'll split it there for now, since I can't make up my mind. Uh, this feels better already. Well, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Like, we could play Lovestruck Beast, but, like, what do we cut? Like, I think Gargaros end up going if we do that. Is probably the next best thing. Which is probably the right answer, honestly. And, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's it's a tough one. I mean, we're already playing, like, a full set of Gym Razors. Playing the Yorvos. <sighs> but, man, Lovestruck Beast is good. So it was pretty cheap to build the deck and was looking to try it. Uh, I've played a lot of different versions of Mono Green. I mean, I'm just telling you, like, these, these other choices are just better. They're, it's not even a a question. You know, 19, 20, 22, 22, 14, 5. Uh, oh, we know. That's actually a thing. So 19, 20, 22, 23, 24... I mean, you could do that, and, uh... Just so you can keep some Gargaros in, or whatnot, as a preference. But this is probably closer to what I'd want to play, honestly. I wouldn't even bother with the Garrix Uprising. You already have a couple of uh, Great Hinges. That's going to serve you better in most cases. This, this is probably what I would do. I think I would. And I think this is just better, more consistent. You have bigger creatures. You have better things you're doing with your early mana. Is the great... I'm assuming you mean great hinge still worth Yeah, great, great hinge is still absolutely worth it. <laughs> like, no question about it. Why not visionary better than great horn? No. No, no, great horn is bad we could take great horn out i thought you were talking about uh the great hinge yeah great horn you just don't even want great horn by comparison is kind of garbo to other choices you could play but yeah great hinge we definitely still want that's not even a question and then there's still now there's two two imaginary slots we could fill with something. Probably let me go through some list here. What would I put in that spot? Uh Stone Coil Serpents. Probably like the only other thing, really. I mean you already maxed out the Gym Razor, already maxed out 
Love struck beast. Couple of stone coil is probably fine. And it gives you another couple of options that you could play as a one mana thing if you need to, to attack with love struck beast. So now love struck makes one ones. Shambler can be a one one. Stone coil can make one ones. So that's probably fine. Scale the heights works good for me. Uh, bootleg Uro. Yeah, that's just trying too hard though. Like, it, it can be good. It can. I can't even say good. It can be useful, but in very corner case situations, and I don't think that's what you want to do. Nah, I don't think you need four scavenging because again, scavenging ooze is re like after your first one, the second and the third one become less valuable unless they're way like four or five turns apart where multiple things have happened because they just eat the stuff the other one would eat. Uh, Surf Heron is fine. It, that's a totally reasonable card to play. You know, nothing unreal about it. Nothing wrong with it. But yeah, this feels closer because now you have more early options to play. Cards that do things can get bigger. You know, you have Scavenging Ooze to remove stuff from graveyards, which is a real thing right now, especially with like Mill with the Rakdos uh, mid-range deck. So that's a thing. So yeah, I, I would... I would try this out. I know that we put more rares and mythics in here for sure, so that could be hard on your resources, but I think this is going to consistently get you more wins than what you had before. Because uh, before, you were spending a lot of time playing cards that weren't really... You were, you were like generating value to not go anywhere, right? Like, you could play the Great Horn, and it's like, okay, well, you got extra lands, but what were you doing with it, right? Maybe you play a Gargaroth, but the problem is... They would just kill your Gargaroth because your other creatures weren't that good. Because you were playing like Gilded Goose and stuff like that that they don't have to worry about, right? They'll just let you keep it. You're not going anywhere with it. So, yeah. Those are my thoughts. But let's go ahead and save that. Uh, okay, I'm going to kill my music for a second, even though it is very faint in the background. And just talk to y'all about something. So... Uh, I got an opportunity. As a matter of fact, let me pull back to the other screen so I can talk to y'all with my large screen instead of this little fun little cutout. By the way, do y'all think this is good or bad or interesting or weird? Because I use it on Twitch, and I know y'all have seen it in the YouTube videos. But I just thought having like a cool and different frame is just something different to bring to the table than what other people do. So, I don't know. I will let y'all decide if it's good or not. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let me bring this back to the YouTube stream. Can we try four Garrick? No, I mean, you could. It's not my deck list. I wouldn't play four Garrick. I, I think that's a bad idea. I think at the most I would do is probably play two. But hey, to each their own. That's why there's so many awesome cards in standard right now. You could build whatever you want. <laughs> all right, so let me say this. If you haven't been chatting, it's going to be really hard to win in this drawing that I'm going to do. Because you kind of have to have chatted for me to select. Because I'm going to select select from a person who has chatted at some point. Now, the number of times you chat doesn't do anything. Because I have it set to omit repeats. So, you know, it's not the more talkative ones get a bonus. It's just anybody who's talked or participated gets a bonus here. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to double check the page. It looks like... Everything is mostly working as it should. Okay, that's good. <laughs> and I actually have an opportunity here to do two giveaways. So actually, there's going to be three giveaways in the next couple days. So there's going to be this one that we're about to do here in a few minutes. We're going to do a giveaway Sunday on my Twitch stream. I'm going to log on about 1 o'clock Pacific time. And stream's going to go for about two and a half, three hours. I'll probably do the drawing in the middle of the stream. So that's going to be the plan there. So that one's going to be the same as what we have here. And then I'm going to have a third giveaway Monday night on Twitch, 9 p.m. to midnight Pacific time. Also probably middle of the stream to give away something fun out of what I call my Dragon Vault. So it's something just different, unique, rare, maybe valuable, whatever. And we've given away old magic novels. We've given away clocks, backpacks. Rare cards, sealed product, just all kinds of things. So if you want to be part of any of those, feel free to show up. 
like I said, Sunday on Twitch or on Twitch on Monday night, and you will be eligible for things because I have tons of things. Uh, all right, so I'm going to have to show you all a campy video. And I hope it works because I'm trying new technology and I put this together myself, so don't laugh. My editing skills are not brilliant, but I was pretty proud of the video. But this is going to give you a look at what we're about to give away courtesy of Ultra Pro. This is really cool. So that's what you'll get. Those are my editing skills. <laughs> so yeah, that is the thing we're going to give away. That is a whole package of stuff that is going to go to somebody. And I also have a set of Nahiri sleeves that I will be giving to a second winner as well. Don't worry, wherever you are in the world, you are, el are eligible. I'll make sure shipping costs are covered. It will get to you. You don't have to worry about anything. So I just have the opportunity to work with Ultra Pro. They're giving me the chance to give some of these cool things away and expose people to some of the new sweet stuff coming out. So I figured y'all would be super into that. So yeah, this is going to be kind of fun. Uh, also, I want to give everybody a link. So if you would like to purchase this and you did not win it, uh, hold on a second. Whoop. Let me copy this because apparently my computer is not working right. All right, there we go. If you would like to purchase it, you can see the details on the items there if you're curious. It is available through several places on TCG Player. So you can hop over there and pick that up for yourself. And I will show you the actual unboxing here as well. So you can see the full thing. This is actually the first time I've seen a full long box that actually fits a playmat. I don't think we really had them like this. So this is pretty cool. I'm really digging this. There you go. You can see it all in the camera shot there. It is a pretty sweet looking box. Really cool art. It's on both sides. Uh, and it's actually pretty decently made. You know, it's like what you expect it would be. But it comes with a lot of neat things. Yeah, every all my times are Pacific time. So yeah, you have this. Uh, this is the back. So it's got the Planeswalker symbol on it. But it's a score pad on the inside, which is pretty cool. So I know something a lot of people forget to bring. I can't count the number of times I had to give people paper and pencil. But yeah, and it's got a lot of sheets in here. So you could use this forever. My goodness. But yeah, that's a cool deal. Uh, the play mat is in here. You do get a deck box that also, I don't know if you can hear that. There are sleeves inside. So you get those as well. Uh, matter of fact, let me open these up so I can show you what kind of sleeves are inside. Because I think that's pretty important. So let's uh, cut one of these right open. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I mean, and let's be real. Like, y'all know, Teferi is literally the bane of my existence. Uh, but you can, even I, not being a fan of Teferi, like, I can't deny how sweet this stuff is. Yeah, so check these out. These are cool. So these are white sleeves with the Teferi and the black art and the, the grayish blue accents, like, to match the rest of the box. These, these are pretty hot. Like, I, the, I would, if these are available outside of this product, I think they're going to sell a lot of these. These are cool. So, yeah, this, this is pretty neato. Uh, I am a very big fan. Uh, and you just want to see, uh, it's, it's a stitched edge, stitched edge play mat. So, I don't know if y'all can see that. There you go. Let me get it over here. There we go. 
Yeah, so it's a normal size play mat. You could use it as your keyboard mat if you want to, like all the other play mats. But yeah, this is also very, very cool. Yeah, these these are, are awesome. Like these these are fantastic. Uh, again, if you haven't, or if you don't win it here, I'm gonna do a drawing here in a second. Uh, there's the link so you can check it out over on shop.tcg player. Hook yourself up, get one. I, I think these are great. Like I said, I'm not even a fan of Teferi. Y'all know that, but I'm pretty sure as they make all the different Planeswalkers of these, if they do, I don't know what their plans are. I would be down to have some of the other ones because this is a cool box. I mean, it's a very cool package. But yeah, again, just look at this thing. Like it is a honking box, but man, it holds everything. I mean, literally. If you're curious how much room is in there, even after that, I'm hoping to try not to drop stuff out of here. But there you go. <laughs> the deck box is at the bottom. There you go. So you can see everything kind of in there, all in piece. Granted, you may not actually put your, like, playmat in here. You'll probably put just a bunch of decks. But, I mean, you could probably put eight decks in there. So lots of, lots of room. Lots of room. But like I said, it's cool. I hope y'all didn't mind my video. If, like, I, I made that. Uh, earlier this early this morning <laughs> uh, somebody asked what I shot it with I actually was going to shoot it with my camera one of the cameras I normally stream with is an SL2 a Canon but I needed to get certain angles and I didn't want the light to be too overexposed and I didn't have time to mess with the settings so I actually just shot it with the Pixel 2 uh, and it came out okay I made some a couple of small like color corrections and editing but Looked pretty good. I was I was pretty happy. I don't know. What did y'all think about the video? Because I I thought it was kind of okay you know, for for my limited skills. I was pretty happy with it, but eh, I also know it could be a lot better. But you know, I'm working with what I got. It's it's quarantine. I couldn't call friends to come work on it. <laughs> Is it bad if you wanted to be a Johnny? No, not at all. We all have our favorite planeswalkers, I'm sure. Paper Magic Gaming on an MTGA stream. Yeah, of course. Uh, I still play Paper Magic. We'll probably still do some streams where we're playing, uh, what you call it? Just Paper Magic over Spell Table. You know, that's a thing. Still, some people are able to hang out with a couple of friends and play. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, like the suspense you built up in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much like it was weird i was trying to like i was like well what if i use some colored lighting to start the video or whatever i was just doing some different stuff i don't know uh anyway let's do oh yeah, yeah. let me show uh these these are the nahiri sleeves so if anybody's curious what we're gonna mail to the next person there is a pack of nahiri sleeves i think it's 100 sleeves it is 100 sleeves it says so on the top there so 100 nahiri sleeves to the second winner as well and all I'll need you to do is you'll need to join my Discord and send me a message. Not Don't post it in the Discord. Send me a personal message on Discord with your address, uh, your name, whatever you want your name to be on there, your username, whatever. Whatever you want to be on the package and your address, and I will get it shipped to you. Hope they expand this product for all the other colors. Uh, looks awesome. Yeah, I'd love to have some as well. I think if there was like a Vivian or a Garrick or something, I'd be into that. I think it'd be very cool. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually needing to get the new Pixel because this phone's actually starting to wear out. I have a Pixel 2. It's been three years, you know, and I've I've dinged this phone up and it's used a, been used a lot for a lot of purposes. So hopefully I'll get a new one. But anyway, let's go in here and draw a winner. Looks like I got to use this new thing and make sure it draws this correctly or else I'm going to feel really bad. Like technology is going to fall apart on me. <laughs> All right, so it looks like the first package is going to... Actually, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to build up suspense. We're going to do the Teferi sleeve or the uh, Nahiri sleeves first. Because I think that's the, that's the lesser and everybody can still be excited to be in for the second one. So Feral Acorn is going to be the winner of our Nahiri sleeves. And then I have to go in here and draw again. And it looks like, oh my goodness, Isabel Nemi Lindfors is going to be the winner of our big Teferi box of things. 
which I have no idea how much it's going to cost to ship, but it's going to ship to you wherever you are. So I need to make a note here. We have Isabel Nemi Linfors. And, and that was the winner of our big box. And for the sleeves was Feral Acorns. All right. That was cool. So got to give some cool things away. I'm excited about that. Now, there is a follow-up. If you show up on my stream on Sunday afternoon, 1 o'clock Pacific time, probably about midway through the stream, we're probably going to go for about three hours. If you show up on my stream, we're going to do this drawing again. So there's going to be another pack of sleeves, different sleeves, and another Teferi box of stuff we're going to give away. So there are going to be another opportunity for you to do that. And you can then also come hang out on my stream on Monday night and have an option for a totally different giveaway because we hit our goals for both our followers and subscribers on that giveaway at the top of the next week. So many, many cool things. Uh, again, I'll post the link here. Anybody can join my Discord, by the way, so feel free to use the link. But I need you to join my Discord, send me a message personally, directly with your name and address, and then we will get stuff sent out to you. I'll try to get it in the mail as soon as possible, but it is Friday, so if it doesn't go out till Monday, don't be surprised. Uh, from the EU, what time you stream on Sunday? 1 p.m. Pacific time. All my times are Pacific times. So yeah. Oh, John Morph is holy cowing about something. I'm not sure about what, but lots of stuff. I, I, I don't discriminate wherever you live if now it may take a little longer to get to you i've shipped stuff to australia that is one got there in like a week but then set in customs for two weeks and then we had another that the person didn't even get it or a notice for like four weeks so i don't know how long it takes right now with covid i just know that stuff still gets there but i will mail it to anywhere in the world no concerns about that holy counting all the giveaways oh yeah that's kind of part of our thing it's what we do uh also i give away a lot of different uh, codes and things as well on my Twitch streams. It's hard to do here on YouTube because I don't have a way to send you a direct message to give you those codes. I used to hide them in videos for a little bit, which was fun to do, but it's very time consuming to every single time you record a video to hide codes all through the video and, and it got to be a little bit of a mess. So what I've been doing now is if people come over from a live stream, join our Discord, Send me a message and say, hey, saw you on this day's live stream. Can I get a code? I will gladly take care of you and get you a code. That's the least I can do for you. Actually really hope that the fairy gear sells well so they can do more play. I do too, Mike. I think that's a very good uh, st relatable statement. Yeah, I think I'm kind of in that same boat. But if I have the opportunity, I would love to pick up some of the others. So I hope it works out too. And yeah, and honestly, it sounds like this is a thing that Ultra Pro is behind. They sounded excited about it. So I hope they do have plans for other ones already. Because I would, other than just love to give some away, I would love to own a couple of these. Like, even if I don't use the boxes or whatever, like, these things are cool display pieces. Like, I would love to just have a stack of these with just like Teferi, Elspeth, Garrick, whatever. And then just have those be on my shelf, you know? I would, I would use those as background. I would probably, I'm already thinking about rearranging my room so I y'all can see more of my actual stuff that I have off to the sides, like behind me. I would love to have those as background material. I think that would, yeah, exactly. They'd make great decorations. I think that would be awesome. So I hope we, hope we get to have those in the future. I'm definitely looking forward to it. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad everybody came and hung out with me today. I think this is awesome. Uh, I hope we get to do it again more often. Uh, helping people with decks is also cool. And like I said, I'm going to take some of those ideas back that y'all had, and I'm going to see what I can do for the membership thing here on YouTube and see if I can come up with some cool stuff for you because I want to offer some things to my YouTube audience that's separate from my Twitch audience. That's kind of why I like doing a few different things and some different giveaways and stuff here. And still, like, because y'all are... I, I don't want one group to feel like they're just way more important than the other group. It's just the content's different, right? Like y'all get videos every single day. The people on Twitch only get to see me three times a week. You know, though they get to see me for three hours, two to three hours each time, 
Y'all are getting me every single day and then now also getting a stream here on YouTube. So I got to figure out what works best. Yeah, I hope we keep growing too. This is a crazy time. You know, I, I want to say thank you to everybody though, because my original goal was just try to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of August. And at that point we were already at like over 4,000. We were starting to encroach on 5,000 subscribers and now we're over seven, you know, so this has been a crazy ride, you know, way more uh, positive response than I really thought everybody was gonna have for what we're doing. You know, I didn't, I didn't think that was gonna be the case at all. And now I'm making Ooh. promo videos for things. <laughs> I'm going to share that with Ultra Pro. I hope they like it. They don't think it's too awful. But uh, when I met with them about this, they were super into it, super friendly, liked the idea. So, you know, I'm with it. Uh, also, don't forget, starting next weekend, they're going to be giving away some play mats for uh, the Extra Life thing. So I'm going to have some pictures of those soon that I can share with everybody to help promote those. So just keep an eye on that. And yeah. This was a good stream, y'all. We got a lot of stuff done. We went through, what, five different decks for people. Uh, met some new people, some new faces. Got to say hi to some folks that I've seen just comment on the videos that I've not gotten to meet. So that was pretty cool. Ah, uh, Buggy Man, don't worry. There's always somebody who dislikes it. I have somebody who downvotes one of my videos within the first, like, five hours every week. I don't know who it is, but eh, it's fine. <laughs> You're not going to please everybody all the time. Like, it's okay. But honestly, like, I don't know. Maybe it's somebody who just didn't win, so they were mad. I have no idea. Oh, but yeah, again, if you haven't, remember there's a link. You can go and you can just go to or shop.tcg player and pick up a thing for yourself. If you have the opportunity, you can buy from an independent seller, pick up from a local store somewhere that's looking to make some money so you can help them out during the pandemic. That could be cool. And just get something little nice for yourself because these things are cool and like i said the sleeves inside the box i thought were really awesome whoa no don't oh isabel can i delete that all right cool there you go uh don't post your personal information in the chat ever in anybody's chat for any reason don't ever 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 do that that is bad please follow my discord link I keep it in the description of all my videos. I will post it here for you. Here you go. Go to my Discord. Send me a message there. Me personally, Power Dragon. Click on my name. A thing will come up that has a, a text box. You can just send me a message directly. That is so much better. And you can keep your information private. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> okay. I, I like giving stuff away. I don't want people to... I'd be chasing each other around have everybody's personal information. Yeah, that, that's that's bad. That's that's a very bad thing. <laughs> I'm just glad I caught it. I just saw it pop up and went, whoa, crap. Let me delete that. Like, that's about to be a disaster. Whew. And it was only up there for a couple seconds, so I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, yeah, that is that's a true monka s moment for sure. Uh, all right. I, I really have fun talking to y'all over here. Cause like I said, on YouTube, I normally just get like, you know, one response interactions with a lot of y'all in comments. I don't really get it kind of one-on-one -on -one in real time. So drop a signed forest in the box. Uh, I won't be able to. The one that Isabel gets is going to be sealed still. So I, I won't have a way to put anything in the box. <laughs> But in the future, sure, I can I can sign some things and, and get them out there. Which is weird, because I've only signed, like, maybe five things in my life that somebody's asked me to sign. But, hey, I'll sign stuff if people want me to sign stuff. I'm sorry I have to resend my info. Please, No, it's totally okay. Totally all right. Uh, like I said, just follow the Discord link. Shoot me a message over there. I'll give the Discord a link one more time for everybody who needs it. Because even between now, if you didn't get help with your deck, feel free to hop in there. Join the right section if you want to talk about Historic or Commander or 
standard and post your deck list in there and get help from everybody else. We have about 200 people that hang out, almost 200 people that hang out in our Discord. So lots of opportunity for help and participation over there. Weekend shirt still is good shape. Uh, mine is in good shape. I have two and I do still wear them periodically. Not all that often, but they've probably been through the wash about 20 to 30 times each and they, they're still doing pretty well. Here for the stream last night, you looked at your mono black. Oh yeah, okay, cool, Mitch. Thank you for stopping by. You did miss the drawing though. We just gave away two different things. We're gonna be doing it again on Sunday. So again, come to the stream on Sunday. 1 p.m. Pacific time, about midway through the stream, so maybe about 2, 2.30, we're gonna do the giveaway. That's a good time to come stop by. Just saying. We're gonna do same things again. We're gonna give a different secondary prize, and then we'll have another Teferi box to give away. So come say hi. It'll be fun. But I think that's gonna be it for me today, everyone. We are gonna start wrapping things up. I still have more things to do because I got to make more content for y'all for tomorrow. And I got to make sure my stream's all set to go on Sunday. So as usual, I want to say wherever you are watching, whenever you are watching, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And please, even if it annoys you or you think it's silly, please wear your mask. Please wash your hands. Please stay away from other humans so we can get past this crazy COVID pandemic and we can get back to gaming the way we like to put the gathering back in our magic as it were so yeah thanks again everybody it was fun hanging out hopefully we'll do it again this is our second week in a row might be becoming a weekly thing on YouTube we'll see how people respond to it but again hit me up on Twitch on Sunday afternoon 1 p.m. Pacific we're gonna do another giveaway and then Monday night, 9 p.m. to midnight Pacific, there will be a giveaway then as well. Don't forget to check us out in the Discord. If you want to support me and buy merchandise, join our Discord. Follow me on Twitter or Twitch. All the links are in the description down below.